Look look at the weird right. mutations. Some of the pictures you took when right after Fukushima happened and the the first plume of radiation radioactive material came over the West Coast and into the United States. Right afterwards you and others were posting pictures and there was a lot of mutated stuff. Not just fruit and vegetables, but plant life too. And other yeah. animal life. And and there yeah. were other people pointing out there were like mutated frogs, right? There were some mutated fish. And isn't it true that if I, I think and I think this was a scientist that said this that like if something goes wrong with the frogs, the human race is really screwed or something like that. Uh, like yeah. along the evolution, like if if the frogs are getting mutated, that's a bad indicator. Is that true? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's something that environmental scientists use to like judge the health of the environment. And it's happening. I've just had a phone call. Wow, like a couple of days ago with this lady named Donna Young, who's a midwife in Utah. And she lives like, I think it's 175 miles, a little bit south and east of Salt Lake City. And, you know, they've had, I mean, that's, we've (laughs) exploded all kinds of, you know, atmospheric tests in in southern Utah um, in the 60s and 70s. And they um, burn nuclear waste in Utah, in fact, Salt Lake City is like directly downwind of a plant in Clive. It's only one of only like three places licensed to do that in the whole country. They actually burn radioactive waste and send it out into the into the you know lower level of the tropopause. So it's raining out on communities downwind. Wait, here and, in the states? Yeah, in Utah. Utah is really dirty. They process mocks there. They don't have any nuke plants either, which is what is so weird because people from Utah think, oh, our state is so healthy. We don't have any nuke plants. But it's like they process this waste. They burn the waste. They take in high-level hazmat PCBs at their burning facilities. And so they're burning all this stuff, and they're making fuel that gets sent then to reactors around the country. And they have this legacy of atomic testing, and it's like, hey, you know, all the frogs are mutated. What's up with that? Well, you know, now they're they're drilling for oil and gas and fracking there like crazy. And this midwife that I called, there was an article that was, was written about her in Newsweek just a few days ago. She had delivered a stillborn baby, and she's been a midwife for like 20 years in this area, which is a really, really small town, like less than 10,000 people. And as she's at the funeral for this baby, she starts looking around and she sees all these other gravestones for babies that are new. And she's like, what is going on here? And so she starts investigating. She actually got the Department of Health in Utah to look into this, and they agreed there's an increase in stillborn babies in at least this area of Utah. They didn't check all the counties. They didn't check all the cities, just the one she was in. And then they diluted the information, taking two surrounding counties and and factoring that in. So when I talked to her on the phone, you know, we're having this conversation was just about stillborns. And I had just looked up her number and called her after seeing her mentioned in this article. And she had been thinking, you know, it's oil and gas, it's oil and gas. And I thought, does she even know, like, what's going on? in the state with radiation that she's directly downwind from. And Salt Lake City had one of the highest contamination levels. It, they were as high as Fukushima, Japan, in the early days, in terms of fallout. Highest place in the United States. So as I'm talking to her, and we, we kind of, you know, I'm talking to her about, like, synergy between, like, oil and gas fumes and things in the environment and radiation and she knew about Fukushima but she didn't know you know nearly um, what she does now let's say and I said you know just as as kind of a side issue have you noticed any birth defects in this little town that you live in and she's like oh yeah we have a whole bunch of little kids that have cleft lip all of a sudden and cleft palate and she could think of one kid that has some kind of eye deformity. And she, she named a whole list of things that she's noticed in very, very young children, like, you know, one, two, three years old. And then I said, okay, what about farm animals? Because she had mentioned that they had goats. And she goes, oh, yeah, I have cattle. And in fact, 50% of my calves this year have been stillborn. 
and the farmer across the street from me has lost eight out of 50 calves. And then we start narrowing it down further, and I'm like, okay, well, what about in your immediate environment? Because she's actually kind of like downwind of this little city. And she said, well, my kids had noticed a couple years ago that all the, the frogs were mutated in the ponds. So, I mean, what what's going on there? If this was happening all over the country, I think we'd probably be hearing about it. I would hope that we would for people who work in pediatric wards and things like that. And I've had pockets around the country where people have contacted me about birth defects that they're seeing in the neonatal intensive wards. But, um, you know, we just, we can't get any numbers. And having, you know, some intel from people, hopefully others hear this show or read something that I wrote, or they'll see something on Twitter, and I'll say, you know what, I need to talk to this person because I have questions. And, you know, they can fill in some of it for me, and I can fill in some of it for them. And really what it comes down to, like, is our relationships that we have with other people. Like, out of, out of all the things that are really important in our life, I think kind of that that's how you narrow it down really to the basic, most basic of things is the relationships that we have with other people and what we can give to their life or what they can give to ours. And that's kind of like the focus that I have to have now because this is a heavy stuff to like deal with all the time. And I never thought I'd still be dealing with it four years later and certainly wouldn't, certainly didn't think that I would be talking to people that are completely studying different things, the same things, but different things, and putting the pieces of the puzzle that they have into this equation, too. And, you know, what we have is just enormous destruction of our environment. And yeah. all of it is coming from industry. 